Simon, in trying to understand what our universe reality is all about, the concept of causation seems to most people sort of obvious. Mm -hmm. uh, we know if I push the table, it's going to move, oh, and that's well. causation. But causation is, is, a, is a very fundamental way that uh, reality is structured. Sure. How can we begin to understand the mm -hmm. deep nature of causation? Yes, indeed. Um, well, the... The philosophical running here was set by David Hume, um, writing back in the early 18th century. Um, and Hume argued two things about causation which are very important. The first was you couldn't know anything about what caused what, uh, antecedent to experience. You had to learn about how events fall out. And that's a matter of using uh, your senses, uh, sensory experience, and just finding how they do. And so, for example, a baby in the first six months or year of its life might be just finding how uh, nature is patterned, what happens when you let go of your milk bottle, it falls to the ground, gosh, let's do it again, mm -hmm. gosh, it still goes on. And that's the way we learn about causation. So that was the first very important thing that he said. The second very important thing was that there's a sense in which causation doesn't hit the eye in the same way that, for example, colors do, or shapes, or mm -hmm. sounds hit the ear. Um, we see what does happen, but we don't see that one event must cause another one to happen. Now, causation has this sort of must happen. You know, you really know that if you kick that table, the table has to fall over. If you throw the baseball through the window, the, at the window, the window will break, it must break. Uh, and it's that aspect of necessity, uh, which Hume thought was very, very important to causation, um, but which isn't given to the senses. We see the window break, we see it happen again and again, we get very used to it, um, but we don't see that the window must break. Um, Hume derived from this the idea that actually the must is something that we impose. So causation is uh, very much our own kind of mind, reading its own kind of habits or customs into the world. So, for example, if I see a cricket ball approaching a window, I, I expect the window to break. Uh, sorry, cricket ball or baseball. <laughs> um, uh, I expect the window to break. I'm certain the window is going to break. If I see a bus bearing down on somebody, I expect there to be a horrible accident. I can't, I can't do anything about that. That's a habit of inference which is set in my mind. And Hume thought we sort of project that inexorability onto events. So we see events as if they're connected by yeah. um, these necessities. Um, but the necessity lies in ourselves rather than in the events. So Hume's conception of the world then becomes one of uh, atom a very atomistic conception in the sense that it's just events, individual events, one happening after another, and us imposing a causal order on what we see or hear or take from the world. Uh, and that's been controversial ever since because it removes causation as a category mm. from the real world and puts it back in our own minds. It's an idealist um, uh, approach. Uh, people have tried to do better. Uh, Hume derived um, notoriously the famous conclusion that um, expecting events to go on falling out as they do, as they have done in our experience, is also just a brute habit that we have. There's no reason in nature uh, for them to keep on keeping on. Um, it's just uh, uh, keep our fingers crossed. God's good pleasure whether things go on in the order in which uh, we're used to them going. So what is the relationship then between causation understood Humean's way and the concept of physical laws? Well, very close, of course, because our, probably our, our, our first examples of physical laws will probably be causal laws. Take, say, uh, the law of gravitational attraction in Newtonian physics. Um, bodies must attract each other with a force inversely proportional to the square of the distance between them. Um, that's a causal law. That's a law that if you've got two bodies like that, that's what's going to happen. Uh, one will cause the other to accelerate or to change its motions. Um, and yet it's very hard to know what, in what the existence of that law consists, what kind of reality answers to that law. 
And Hume would again say, well, the only reality is that that's how events fall out. That's what your measurements will give you. Uh, it's a pattern, um, but it's not an explanation of the pattern. In modern science, uh, we have the concept of causation being uh, fuzzied a bit. In uh, quantum physics, sure. uh, non-localities, yeah. even talk of backward causation sure. in yes. terms of time. Yes. Uh, how do you view those mm -hmm. radically different mm -hmm. approaches mm -hmm. to the nature of causation? Right. Well, of course, they're very unfamiliar to the common sense mind. We don't think that later events can cause earlier ones. We don't uh, like um, uh, the coincidence between the ways particles behave, if there can be no signal between them or if they're separated by um, sufficient distances. Um, so they're very unfamiliar to us. Um, Hume would say they're nothing more than that. They're just unfamiliar. So just, you know, so you've just got to suck it up, as people say. That is, if this is the pattern, um, then that's the pattern. And it's no, it shouldn't be regarded as more mysterious than any other pattern of events. Um, but of course, we, we find great difficulty, uh, in, particularly with backward causation, I think. I don't think quantum theoretical entanglements boggle the mind quite as much as backwards causation in time. That really does worry us. And I think to get used to it, you've got to think in terms of a, basically a block universe, a timeless universe, uh, in which all events have been laid out, with time itself an artifact of our own take on things, our own mental structures. So to understand causation is how important in understanding our world? Well, I think we'd be very baffled, or we are very baffled, when we find things for which we can offer no causal explanation. Um, and um, finding the regularities, finding the, the structures, the way things fall out, is of course integral to any scientific understanding of the world. I think the human mind is shaped that way. So, for example, in more primitive times, um, people looked at agency causation. They felt they understood themselves doing things. Uh, so if you've got agents doing things, that somehow explains things nicely. Uh, and you get an animistic conception of the world. The world is informed by agency. Um, spirits and spirits gods and, gods. and souls. Exactly, exactly. Now, of course, with the rise of modern science, that lost ground. We felt that we were on firm, firmer ground saying how things cause things. Uh, and agency causation slipped, uh, slipped back in the running, as it were. Um, if Hume is right, then um, all we're doing is putting things into more and more elaborate patterns, more and more general patterns. Um, and if we go on asking and ask what's the rationale for those patterns, we're eventually going to meet a blank wall. We're going to meet a place where we can't go. Um, now, of course, we'd like to understand causation, so we understand why things must happen as they do. Uh, but that may be a goal that we can't achieve. And I'd be sorry. <laughs> I'd be sorry if anybody's too alarmed by that, but I think it may be the human condition.